Hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. Today I want to talk about my first impressions on the KMS Empton. This is now the final step in my approach through the tech tree of Germany. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I will research anything more because, you know, the progress will be wiped with the open beta. New nations will hopefully come in over the length of or over the course of a few weeks, months. And so I was very interested to research at least the German top tier predator in the tech tree, rank 4, battle rating 5.0. And it's and in its combat capabilities, I think this thing is so far completely unmatched. Very, very good armor layout, very devastating firepower, but it is slow. And the massive problem with it that you have all those guns, all this armor, and mostly it is uncontested, and you lose the match anyways because patrol boats just capture two of the three capture points, and you are not even there to capture the third one before the match ends. That is a problem with the map design, that is a problem of the match layout of the small teams, and also the long queue time. So I had quite a few difficulties getting some well, footage that is worthy of showing for this ship. I really like the ship and the far power, the armor gives you really the feel of a capital ship. <clears throat> As somebody that has played World of Warships, I think this ship feels more like a battleship than the battleships in World of Warships. Yeah, so I think there is so much to talk about and um, I try to condense it into just a few minutes of intro. First of all, you speed 38 kilometers an hour, a little bit of maneuvering, your smokestack gets hit in a fire exchange even by destroyers and you lose drastically speed. So your speed is half of most of the destroyers that you'll face. For instance, the Z20 here has 71 kilometers an hour. The stock grind is not an issue in terms of your fighting capabilities, rather than to get over it, to get enough RP and, and silver lines. And um, that is really what yeah, holds me back from playing it more. Don't get me wrong, once in the fight, you're an absolute monstrosity. Eight 15 centimeter guns, with good ammunition, a lot of ammunition, um, very nice secondaries, and then also a lot of AAA, and even torpedoes, together with this fantastic turtle back layout, uh, makes you practically um, undestructible by artillery fire from enemy ships. So the outer hull is just good enough here on the main belt to um, not let high explosive shells through, because the best one have 30 um, 48 millimeters of penetration and the armor piercing that will go through the fuse will get activated and it detonates on top of the turtle back armor um, with your ammunition storages and your propulsion systems staying intact um, yeah I think this is an absolute monstrosity of a fighting ship again a shame that it is rarely put to the test um, so I think what are your problems Time. Time is your problem to get into position, to actually have something to shoot. This is a massive, massive issue. So, um, how to break it down? Well, first of all, let's compare it, in my opinion, to the USS Trenton, which is the American uh, light cruiser. And there you can see it also has the um, 48 millimeters of high explosive shells. One advantage that the Trenton has is the better anti aircraft in terms of having here the HE with radio fuse, you just have the direct shells. But if we then go into the armor layout, we can see that on paper we have a thicker main belt by around about 50%. However, that is meaningless because there is no uh, second armor layer, at least that I can see, and your ammo racks are still unprotected. Yes, they are a bit under the waterline, but nothing that a good old armor piercing just. Um, in the plunging fire or um, going a little bit through the water can ignite and also this propulsion with, will get knocked out so while this ship might have some advantages in forward firepower um, maybe even a bit in speed when it fights against the German counterpart it will lose eight or nine times out of ten 
if both captains are equally skilled. This is an absolute monstrosity, the combination of firepower, durability, survivability, armor layout and just long range capabilities is absolutely phenomenal. So again, the shell types, the stock HE shell is practically everything that you need. The AP, unlike on the Z20 Carl Galster or the American counterpart, the Cowell, is a pure option. Um, it also does a lot of damage. It also travels with a very good muscle velocity of 960 meters compared to the both HE shells with 835 meters per second. Um, it is when a cruiser is bowing, when there is armor to penetrate, that you can't deal with with the Sprenggranaten, then yes, but it you I rarely really needed it. And I'm also not quite sure if I need the HE with the base fuse. The stock HE is that powerful. Same goes for the 105s, you can see no flux shells or no anti-aircraft burst charges. Um, they are more secondaries than anti-aircraft guns. And that, that is complemented by the anti-aircraft firepower of 40mm Bofors and 20mm in dual and quadruple mountings. And you even have torpedoes. Um, I guess the Trenton doesn't have this luxury, does it? Um, yes, yeah, yeah, it has torpedoes, it even has more, but uh, I think with this thing it is more useful as a threat it's not one of your main uh, weapons so i really really like the ship i think it's awesome to play once the close beta goes into the open beta and the progress is wiped this will be one of the ships that i want to go for again the issue is winning the games and if you look at the service record look at this 42 percent win ratio i was at one point down to 33% which is at one point was half of what the Z20 delivered. Now why is that? Well you spawn behind the destroyer spawn, you are uh, having half the speed, you have to maneuver in long range firefights against enemy uh, light cruisers and destroyers and while you win them you have no influence on the outcome of the uh, capture zone um, battle and that is mostly decided by yeah, destroyers because they have a shorter way to the central cap they just will feast on the patrol boats and you can't shoot them because of the islands uh, and even if you can shoot them uh, it's rather rare that you hit and knock them out before they can go back into cover I think it's not the ship's fault it is more of a map design fault of the capture the base or capture the capture point philosophy of Gaijin that really approaches an outdated status in my opinion especially with big ships and um, yeah it's a shame because very often there is nothing for you to do you have all this firepower you have all this armor survivability and you know big guns but there is nothing for you to shoot and that is really a big problem with this one once you are in the fight you are the beast you are um, you know bringing a new meaning to the phrase um, bring the enemy to the slaughterhouse. Uh, a normal destroyer in a one versus one, no chance. Really no chance. I mean, yes, there are parts where you can uh, get damaged and you might burn, lose a bit of speed, lose a turret, you know, two forwards, two backwards and two on each side, maximum broadside, six guns and you have half the rate of fire of the Z20. But still, the Alpha Strike versus the DPM battle is thanks to your armor decided uh, in your favor most of the times. So I have two battles for you and I will show you the very first battle and one of the other battles and then you might come across the issues. However, the main issue might not become that apparent because I will cut out a lot of the just simple traveling time in the beginning. So this is now actually the very first battle and I will go straight into the fight. Now, please have a look where the enemy appeared and where I am. I now have reached the uh, well, position of the destroyer spawn of, uh, of my team and there is already an enemy Cowell of Fletcher class and he is challenging me in the first few minutes of the game uh, in our side of the spawn. 
Now in a direct firefight, again, he has no chance and the hits do so much damage. That's a lot of damage. Um, I'm not quite sure if he will be able to fix it with flex tap, but those hits are devastating. The crew gets mowed down. That was the very first battle, so I had a few, you know, uh, things to learn about the ship, how the guns behave, and uh, yeah, the secondaries, <laughs> the 105s, were a bit deceiving when it comes to um, the, their splashes and the impacts. And um, yeah, look at where I am right now. It will take me now the rest of the match to get to B. So this is without repair kit, without fire prevention equipment, anything like that. Um, no speed upgrades, anything like this. And there you can see I actually stopped for the moment to have um, better shots at this guy because he now came to a standstill and I made a crew knockout. So you can see not all the sections were black but the HE impacts killed so much crew. Um, it was really impressive and um, I was really confident that my impact on the outcome of the game could be, you know, noticeable. This is um, fitting the meta. Not every ship that doesn't fit the meta is automatically bad. The same goes for a plane or a tank. But War Thunder has a simple design philosophy that a vehicle has to fulfill in order to have an impact on the win ratio. And to be honest, if you are there and there is nothing for you to do, nothing for you to shoot, but you carry so much firepower and all the armor, you are no use for your team. The enemy team out, well, outnumbers my team effectively in the fight because I'm for a very long time out of the fight. And so that is just simply an issue. There is no way around it or uh, there is no chance for people to deny that. That is an issue. And even just to sail in a straight line ahead and just uh, try your best, it is problematic. Having half the speed of the destroyers that you will face most of the time, while also having a longer travel distance and not being able to shoot the opponent, except if they come to you, is just a big issue. Now, once they are in firing range, you just cut them down, you just mow them down. There is no other way to, to call um, than to call this ship an absolute monstrosity. Now, currently it is the biggest fish in the pond, uh, so this might not really surprise you, but it's also the, the armor layout, the turtle back design, where you have the 50 millimeter armor plating and the interior spaced armor um, that is also angled of 40 millimeters. So HE shell cannot penetrate the outer layer and armor piercing shells will just detonate in the void between the two armor platings and the shrapnel do not manage to punch through the uh, second layer armor. So a lot of the shells that get fired at you actually shatter on the main belt or if they penetrate just do little to no damage. Now I think to have eight separate turrets with a little bit of armor actually keeps you in the fight longer because if one gun gets knocked out big deal you have seven more you have always at least five guns for a broadside that is as many guns as the destroyers have now the thing is that um, you need to be okay with your shots of course if you don't hit anything then you can have all the firepower in the world my issue is for the long term Currently, this is the biggest fish in the pond, but this will change, of course, in the future. When I think Gaijin will come around to make uh, heavy cruisers, you know, and bigger guns, guns that have different ammunition, maybe even solid shots, that then might be able to punch through the armor. And uh, funnily enough, the ship's uh, weakest point of armor is when it goes bow in. When it is broadside, the armor layout is the most effective. And there you can see it's now four minutes in the game, or five, five and a half minutes into the match, and I'm crawling towards B. I cannot really maneuver, I try my best here, but 
the enemy has to come to me. Now my team made here a very very nice stand and they actually fought hard for A which now gets contested. There is no chance for me to um, interfere. I tried to straddle here the HE shells on the bridge and I hit them but the area is already saturated. I need to get another unsaturated section of the ship to shoot at. He's already down to 33% uh, of crew. And um, meanwhile, I have some fun here with this Siebelfähre. There you can see, that's a lot of damage. So while he gets showered uh, with a beautiful rain of 40 and 20 millimeter shells, the massive 15 centimeter HE shells just do the rest. It just um, is a difficult task to hit the right areas of the Siebelfähre to cut down the remaining crew which is now at the backside. So maybe against this target an armor piercing shell would be enough, but eventually we hit the right spot, we splash down and we kill the remaining 18% of crew. Now another feature of the gun layout is that you can fight in both ways. And there you can see from 33 to 20% of crew with a single hit. And um, I see now the torpedoes coming my way. This is why I now um, decelerate, break hard, and uh, just hope that he has not accounted for that. Searching for another unsaturated section of the ship and we actually get ourselves another kill. So now I'm an aerial denial threat. Uh, everything that comes here into this area will get chopped into pieces by my guns. There is no way, no other way to say that. Yes, I've lost one of my front guns, yet I just overwhelm everything with my firepower. There you can see the torpedoes, B is captured and you know also to capture those rather small capture points is an issue. If you have to avoid torpedoes, if you have to maneuver to bring all guns to bear, you very often have, <coughs> have a problem of, of then going back into the cap. It will take minutes to maneuver around, especially when stuck. Now look at this destroyer and look at my firepower incoming. He has twice the rate of fire, he's shooting me with armor piercing and I'm just not interested. I don't care, I can show full broadside, the armor layout will protect me and my crew. Yes, I will take losses, yes, I will take damage, but I still can fight back. It is, um, there is just a very slim possibility of my Amorex getting uh, ignited, uh, maybe losing guns, yeah, that might be an issue. But in a direct firefight, you just chop everything apart. Um, just an issue to find the right spots. Now he's down to 0% crew. And a single another hit on the bridge. There we go. Another kill. So, um, that's already some kills, which is really nice. And then there is a plane. I tried to shoot it down, but my aim while the plane is maneuvering is not the best. And we are caught in the reload. So there is another Siebelfähre and that's just cute if he tries to challenge me. Well, he has no other choice. Again, this is now a position that is very desirable for this ship. But it really depends on where you spawn and where the enemy is going. And that is just a big issue. So that was now a torpedo that hit me. And um, yeah, I lost a lot of crew and I now have to seal the leaks. There is an AFD and ooh, that's a lot of damage. No, that's not an AFD, that's another Siebelfähre. Yeah, that's the Schwere with the 88s. The Dotra 17 that uh, actually, I think, hit me, got shot down. And again, we just have to find the right spots on the Siebelfähre. Now I have to say for this ship, especially at long range engagements, the aiming system makes sense but i still stand by it that it is absolutely ridiculous to you know also force it on patrol boats funnily enough the capital ships are able to um, actually go into direct fire mode with the uh, 20 and 40 millimeters and maybe even the secondaries but not the patrol boats which is kind of funny well they can as well with the secondary guns if they have one but um, again, that is a different question. So now you can see I have to pump out the water. It take me another 50 seconds and I'm just standing still here. Um, I cannot move any longer. My propellers are shot. 
and I'm down to 7% crew. So those are now my secondary guns that try to hit this Heinkel 111 with 105mm HE shells. The rate of fire of them is quite impressive, as you can see in that blaze away. And eventually such a slow plane that tries to come close for hitting me with probably the Fritz X. Um, it is a big threat for me, armor piercing bombs are actually very painful. But so is a 105mm direct hit on a plane. <laughs> that was really, really nice. So, yeah, this is now the first battle. It will come to an end. I could secure B, but what about the other two capture zones? Therefore, my team had to, well, carry a little bit. You can see it looks impressive. Two planes, six ships, four kill assists taking a lot of damage, being the point of attraction, um, and yeah, that is how you have to play it. And then the absolute nightmare comes, and that is a fighter with a bomb. And now my AAA fire just, uh, yeah, was not enough to save me. That was a beautiful, beautiful hit, and that took out my crew, my remaining crew, by, I guess, uh, punching through the turtle back or the deck armor of 20 millimeters with a bit of a fuse delay yeah and at the very end i died but we still won the match so let's have a look quick look at the results at how much income i got for all my effort civil line wise it's okay -ish, 35 point four thousand civil lines um and then also 1,886 modification research points, which is rough, <coughs> roughly a third of the tool set. Yeah, uh, that's not really satisfying, I have to say. But being first in the team with all the damage that I dealt, with all the uh, ships that I sank with 1,800 and 89 score points, that's a good result. So before I show you the last match, I want to show you a few nice scenes. Um, not too much, actually, um, or not too many. And the first one is here. I am in another match. You see the enemy has um, control over all three capture zones. I actually just get the um, target box over an enemy. And the first salvo is out. And actually, the second salvo detonates exactly on the Amorak of this Cowell and takes him out over the island. I already got four kills, but it doesn't really matter. In the next match, um, I was very, very heavily in the fight. And this was one of the few times where I actually launched my torpedoes into a gap um, in a very, very small pattern. Just a few seconds later, a plane was doing a suicide run on me. My AAA hits it, critical hit. But I see the bombs and I just turned into them and I actually survived those bombs. You can see a lot of damage inflicted, but I'm still um, combat efficient and my torpedoes actually hit an LCS. <laughs> now, this is now the battle that I wanted to show you. And I am now starting at the very bottom of the map. If you look at the minimap. I'm again behind my destroyer spawn. So um, I think the only way to spawn further away would be, <laughs> on, I don't know, a tropical map. <laughs> um, I see that it is kind of a balancing factor, but effectively it takes you out of the match. Now this battle was just so impressive because I had nothing but destroyers to fight at long range. And I was really controlling this side of the map. But the problem is controlling just one of three areas with one ship is not enough. Because if the enemy takes the other two, then uh, you're out of the match. And that is sadly what happens very, very often. I once were down to 33% win ratio. That is an issue. It must be said. You lose so many matches which you could have won if you would have been in a faster ship that could have uh, stuck that could have been stuck in into the fight much well much quicker much more efficient so you are nearly unkillable but it doesn't really matter if the map design prevents you from interfering with multiple caps if you're taking so long to get into a certain position can i just say how how beautiful 
those maps look with that orange lighting of a sunset or you know sunrise it really looks cool also the distance it feels like you're shooting at distance it feels like you have this long range capabilities i have to give this to gaichen this is something really really nice back to the match so there are multiple destroyers and they are already shooting at me and they're actually coming pretty close with their shots and i have now a problem to bring all the guns to bear and still be able to go into C. So now I try to turn around uh, and go directly to C because those destroyers are making a massive monumental fail. They're picking a fight with me. At this distance, at um, the circumstances in the open, eventually my shots will land. Eventually my shots will do damage. By the way, one massive, massive tip for uh, you ongoing captains out there. The range finding very often just is too high. Or you just overshoot the enemy. Because most of the time the enemy is coming closer and closer and closer. And at those combat distances, when the range finder estimates a distance of, let's say, 8300 meters, then you do a very good favor to yourself if you shoot at around about 800, 7,900 meters. So, no, 8,000 meters or 7,900 meters, and you will get so many more hits. It's just how it works. And again, this is a very important lesson. And so, eventually, I will, um, well, get many more kills in the future thanks to that knowledge. I can see a few hits and the enemy destroyer is already down to 48% crew and we continue firing at him with just the high explosive. So that was a match where I actually had the armor piercing unlocked. But again it's not necessary and we do so much damage to the enemy and he's down to 10% crew. He is now more or less standing still and then we hit the front section and take out the remaining crew for our first kill on a Z20, which is not a bad ship if I may say so. So there is the next target and we open fire. And that then brings us to the question, why do I win so many more battles with the Z20 than with the KMSM? Now I already approached it with, you know, you spawn, you're faster in the combat zone, you hunt down the patrol boats, you capture the points, you hold the points, um, and you can also uh, avoid torpedoes much better. And the KMS Empton currently undergoes a heavy stock grind when it comes to, you know, upgrading the rudder, upgrading the machinery, the propulsion in general. So maybe bringing some numbers to the argumentation might be, you know, suitable. So in 36 battles with the Z20, I died 25 times where I took out 8 planes and 137 enemy um, ships, which I sank. That makes a KD of 5.5 to 1. And I also captured many points. I was very aggressively going in and I died 25 times. So around about mm, yeah, two thirds of my matches I died in. The KMSM is the very opposite. 42.9% win ratio. I was at one point down to 33% uh, after 21 battles. I died six times, so nearly three quarters of my matches I survived and I shot down five planes, impressive, and I killed 52 enemies. That's a bit underwhelming, but not because I'm so bad, but because I have just nothing to shoot at. But the KD is higher, six deaths versus 52 kills, that's a KD of, you know, close to... 8.5 so you can see where the issue is once the once the enemy is coming for you you can chop them down but again to meet them on the battlefield that's the that's the problem um so here the enemy is picking a fight with me and i'm shooting armor piercing shells they have this strange greenish yellowish cover on the tracers and uh, you can see i'm doing a fair amount of damage to the enemy team and now the only rock on the entire side of this match actually protects him. 
So, I don't know. It is satisfying to be the top dog, but it's really annoying to have very often nothing to shoot. The battle footage that I show you is the good portion. There were matches where I just traveled and traveled and traveled and tried to get close to the fighting zone. It took me minutes of and minutes of traveling. After five minutes, I was halfway to the uh, capture zone and um, then nothing happened. I, there were just a few patrol boats to shoot, maybe one or two destroyers that were in range and I shot them a lot, but eventually there is just not a lot of action going on and the most action is at long range. Now practically due to how the um, big shells behave over distance, you have a better fighting chance than a destroyer, but a destroyer can just shoot with twice the rate of fire has therefore more shells in the air, can dodge your shells and uh, also lay a smoke screen and just disengage at will. And that keeps you occupied and uh, you very often then tunnel vision and it might be possible for an enemy destroyer to launch a spread of torps. You see them too late, you cannot turn in in time and you eat a torp to the center of the ship and that will kill you. So I'm not quite sure what to think about the ship. The ship itself is fine, is absolutely brutal and awesome. But um, to bring all the firepower and armor to bear to make it work, that's the issue. And look, there is now an LS boat and I tried to kill it. I switched to high explosive shells. And I completely miss, I have no idea where the shells went. And then I hit him with a single shell and take him out. Meanwhile, the other destroyer came around at the same time, but it do doesn't shoot me. And look at the damage that those HE shells do. Chop down to 11% crew. We aim at the rear and, um, well, that's the end for him. Just like that. Once an enemy loses its speed advantage, loses the maneuverability, there is nothing left for him to do. But now, all the time that I've spent in the battle, um, I'm not even approaching C yet. I'm about to, and there I have to dodge some torpedoes. So I didn't really um, pay too much attention. But honestly, look at how the ship drifts into the torpedo. Now I'm sure that he will miss me and I just uh, dodge it. And we have some new customers. Some planes. Hopefully some uh, destroyers are coming for me and I need to capture. Another destroyer is coming in and now I have the dilemma. Should I shoot him with the full broadside or should I cap? Of course I need to cap. The shells are landing, they're doing a lot of damage, the ships get shut down, I lose another turret, now I have the repair kit and look at that damage, oh, that's just monstrous. The closer you get to a destroyer, the more devastating your servos are be because you just hit more and as you can see the shells automatically always um, get shot higher than uh, you want them to. And so it is very recommendable to shoot for the waterline to get the maximum hits on the waterline or on the uh, superstructure as well. Another problem is to actually hit the unsaturated areas. I'm constantly, constantly um, adjusting the aim. Then we want to shoot for the middle of the ship. And now look at this. Because of that maneuvering, I had to... Um, well bypass the capture zone. Now the enemy has A and we don't have B anymore. So that's an issue. I'm so close to C yet so far away. It will take a lot of time to maneuver into that. In fact my plan is to uh, drop the speed and reverse. See I have no problems dealing with enemy destroyers. Just like that. No problem at all. But again, the maneuverability um, around the rather small caps is an issue. So, I think 
this this is not a ship for everybody this is not a ship for um, those who want to have a lot of action you get the most action with currently with the premium destroyers no doubt about that end of discussion and while the torpedo firing angles are really really great to the front and also to the rear um, if you tunnel vision like I am then you overlook this LS and then it gets really really funny so that was bad reaction on my end, first of all to spot him too late, second of all his comical torpedo launch and I thought he would have butchered it up and now the torpedoes are running parallel and I actually get hit in the front section by two torpedoes and I take no flooding damage. Yeah, um, then I chop him down with the 20 millimeters. But I'm on fire, I lost a bit of uh, 20 millimeters. Now they are repaired and restored. My uh, heavy flak guns are blazing away at something. And I just try to move forwards now into the capture zone. What is that? Oh, that was a direct hit with a 105 millimeter HE shell on a Henschel 129B. Could have been the one with the 75 millimeter shell if somebody tried to amorac me. But again, uh, at this distance, at that angle, if he hits the ammo rack that is still protected by some armor platings, I'm not quite sure. It's with just 13 shots, I, I'm not quite sure. So now I try to accelerate full ahead. And you can see it is slow. It is slow bad acceleration now that's not really a design fault for the ship i think the ship itself is nicely implemented but it doesn't fit the matter uh, it is just not something natural for a bigger ship to maneuver and to just uh, turn on a dime and just capture you know an area inside of some buoys that is just strange that's really really strange now eventually i will go in and i will capture it but at the same moment that i went into c to capture it the enemy went into b the tickets are still bleeding for me there is nobody left on my team uh, that can really change the outcome of the battle and i tried here my best i was completely controlling this side of the map and that is just <clears throat> so annoying because you get all the kills you get all the actions you control one side of the map and yet you lose so often because you just go not into the center of the map and kill all the patrol boats capture the central point now on the majority of battles that i played on this map I went into A and I dominated A and that was the key to success with every single vessel. And that is just um, a big, big design issue. And so, yeah, we lose the match. Um, I get the survivor award. Six ships sunk, two planes shot down, one sound captured, one kill assist. Let's have a quick look what we get for that. Now I know it's a very, very long video. But I just have to show you those two matches to give you the right impression on this uh, vessel. So, um, a few backups, 31,000 silver lines, 1,400 modification research for a loss, survivor award, and again, just a quarter for the fire prevention equipment. That is lame. That is lame. The economy for ships currently in the closed beta is absolutely ridiculous. And also... Therefore, the stock grind, despite you being in a very, very strong vessel, takes a while with that because there is nothing for you to kill. You lose a lot of the matches. You just uh, very often don't do any damage if there is nothing to shoot. Remember, the footage that I showed you was kind of the exception, the action part. And as you can see, I have no problems with the firepower. I have no problems with the survivability of the ship, where it is just excellent and currently, in my opinion, the best in the game. But to make that work, to actually make use of that because of your spawn location, the long travel distance, and just the enemy destroyers doing all the work or your destroyers, 
leaving you not that impact on the outcome of a battle that you might expect for such an excellent ship. So that is my first impressions on the KMSM. Fun ship, I don't regret researching it. Um, I want to see how it develops with more upgrades to see the difference in terms of speed and outcome of the battles and so forth. Maybe improve my aim, maybe alternate a bit more between the ammunition, we'll have to see. That's it for me today. Um, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you did, subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other on the battlefields, in the skies and on the waves of War Thunder.